Dr. Kotler, is the Kotler nasal airway a splint or a stent? Per se, it's neither. The airway is an airway. That's its major mission. However, due to its configuration, you can use it as a stent to help packing stay where you want it. For example, we put absorbable packing between the airway and the inferior turbinate after the turbinate surgery. You can also put telfer or any other major packing material between the airway and the septum. But the main mission is still providing a great continuous airway for the patient. Um, are there any contraindications to using the Kotler nasal airway? There are no contraindications. We had experience with 150 patients. Every patient that had any nasal surgery, whether it be cosmetic or functional or both, handled the tube in place very well for one to five days. And how long can the airway stay in place? In our initial study of 150 patients, the airway was in place anywhere from one to six days. The duration depended on packing. If packing is in place for six days, the airway stays in place for six days. If the packing is removed on the first or second day, the airway can come out. And of course, if one were not to pack the nose, it would just depend on the circumstances and how the patient was getting along. We had no complications, no problems. The bottom line is for any nasal surgery, the airway is a plus for the patients for any duration. Mm -hmm. Can one also use nasal septal splints? The surgeon may choose to use a nasal septal splint if that's the preference. That would not necessarily interfere with the airway. The airway rests on the floor of the nose. It was designed to be in that area because that's hardly ever operated on. It's sort of a surgically quiet area. So there's plenty of room for a septal splint to be placed. If one doesn't routinely pack the nose, why would they insert an airway? Some surgeons say, well, Maybe we don't need an airway, after all, we don't pack the nose. However, when you really discuss in detail, you learn that the patient says they're still not comfortable after surgery. There's blood in the nose, there's mucus in the nose. We advise the patients not to blow their nose or clear it for fear of having some problems. So in fact, they're gonna have nasal blockage. So whether the nasal blockage is from packing or whether the nasal blockage is from the natural accumulation of secretions within the nose, the bottom line is the patient can't breathe. Having the airway in place totally obviates that problem. There is no problem breathing if the airway is in place regardless of what else is going on inside the nasal chamber. Okay. Is there any packing material or technique of packing that is incompatible with the airway? There is no packing technique that I'm aware of which would cause interference with the airway. The airway incidentally is strong enough to stand up to reasonably tight packing. We know that from experimenting. Um, and so whatever the surgeon's choice is, is still available and can be used. The only difference is sitting on the floor of the nose will be the airway, providing the patient what they need. Is it possible for the tubes to be blocked by blood or mucus? It is possible for the tubes to be uh, partially or sometimes completely blocked by blood and mucus. However, that's a function of how well the post-operative instructions are followed. We tell the patient and direct the conversation really to who's ever looking after the patient the first night or so to irrigate the tubes on a schedule, generally uh, no less often than every four hours during the first day, including once at night. As long as the tubes are irrigated along that schedule, it's not going to accumulate. Now, worst case scenario, family's not very good at it, there is some blockage, patient's uncomfortable, it's a short office visit. But that's been very rare. In our experience with our case study, fewer than 5% of patients required an office visit in the post-operative period to have the tubes suctioned out. That's all one needs to do in the office. And Dr. Kotler, can the airway dislodge anteriorly or posteriorly? The airway cannot dislodge posteriorly because of the bridge that connects the two tubes. And incidentally, there's never been a failure of the device. It's never torn, it's never separated. It's a one-piece molded device anyway. As far as the tube going forward, coming out the nostrils in front of the nose, that's never happened. And the reason is because when we swallow, 
we always create a negative pressure and that tends to draw any structure inside the nose posterior. So that's not been a problem. Are there any worries about the tube sticking to intranasal tissue and causing problems in removal? We've had no problem removing the tubes. They're made of the standard class six medical grade silicone, which is a phenomenal material. The tubes slide out very easily, and incidentally, because there's always blood and mucus in the nose, there's always a film that's been built up around the tube, making it very easy. We do use a couple drops of topical anesthetic just to give the patient certainty that it's not going to be uncomfortable, although the fact is, even without it, the patient's tolerated very well. It slips out very easily and quickly. And will insurers compensate the surgeon for the additional service of inserting, positioning, and later removal of the airway? Yes, insurance carriers have recognized that this is another additional service provided to the patient during the operative session. Insertion and fixation of the airway is important not only for the patient, but as a safety measure for the anesthesiologist to have unimpeded access to suction the pharynx at the end of the case. The anesthesiologists are very, very happy with the device for their needs. Because it's another consumable supply, just as an endotracheal tube or any other disposable, the surgery center or hospital or doctor's office can order that from any of our distributors. Finally, there are two questions, doctor. The first is, is there any reason not to provide a service that gives patient comfort and, in fact, is a practice builder? And the second question is, is there any reason not to have an additional profit center in your practice? Let me share with you that the greatest champions of the Kotler nasal airway are patients who've had it in place for their surgery. And among the patients that have had it are those who had previous surgery without the airway. They really can tell the story of their satisfaction and why it makes perfect sense to have an airway in place so that there is no sense of blockage, of anxiety, of claustrophobia, one patient said it was even like being waterboarded when there's no airway in place and the patient is forced to breathe through his mouth. The dry mouth, the soreness, all the irritations that go with it are relieved by having the cobbler nasal airway in place.